He was happy, and he said so. It was the news you never want to get, but you think someday you might. Matthew Perry's stepdad, Keith Morrison, sharing his family's grief on camera for the first time. How are you and how is your wife after Matthew's passing? Well, it, it, it's a... <laughs> As other people have told me hundreds of times, it doesn't go away. It's with you every day. The Dateline correspondent opening up on today, nearly five months after the 54-year-old friend star's shocking death. I'm Chandler. I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> How do you hope everyone continues to celebrate Matthew's legacy? Celebrate him. Keith, I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, thank you. As he said himself, if, if I suddenly died, people would be shocked, but not too many people would be surprised. Uh, and he was right, I think. That's Keith in October outside Matthew's home, hours after his stepson was found dead in his hot tub. A coroner's report determined he died from the acute effects of ketamine. Keith was tasked that night with identifying Matthew's body. Did it surprise you? It was the news you never want to get, but you think someday you might. So, yes and no, I guess, is the answer to that. I never tried to replace his dad, but I was, uh, I was there for him, and he knew it, and, and, and we, uh, we, were, we were close. Matthew was 10 years old when Keith married his mom, Suzanne. Toward the end of his life, they were closer than I've seen them for decades, and texting each other constantly, and so he was happy, and he said so, but also... You know, he didn't get to have his third act, and um, that's it's not fair. Keith's interview comes after new details emerged about Matthew's will. In legal docs obtained by E.T., he left a trust worth over a million dollars in assets. Keith's daughter and Matthew's half-sister, Caitlin, is listed as one of the beneficiaries. Do you still feel his presence? Do you sense him? You know, we do this funny trope of Dateline <laughs> lit up a room, right? Uh, or the center of the room. Well, he was, and he was always the center of attention everywhere he went. So yes, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's gone, but you still feel the echo of it everywhere. There's some new aspect of it that assaults your, your brain, and you know, it's, it's not easy. In the wake of Matthew's death, his loved ones started a foundation in his name carrying on Matthew's passion of helping people like him struggling with addiction and substance abuse. You get into a place in your life where you're having a problem and you either, you know, lie down about it or step up to bat and take your, uh, take your swing. As he put it himself, it is a disease and it's a very, very difficult one to beat. He felt like he was beating it, but you never beat it. And he knew that too.